All right, this is my TYT TH9800 quad band FM radio. It has six meter, 10 meter, two meter, and 440. So what I want to show you today, the reason I'm making this video, I wanted to explain the radio to you so you knew exactly what was going on. You could see what was going on. This is as is. There, there goes a beep, random beep there. Uh, you may be wondering what this is. This is uh, plastic on the screen. You can see me fold it down there. So, as you can see this, this beep, now, that should be getting your attention right there. Why is it doing this beep? I have no idea. I've, uh, I've been researching for some time now online. I've only been able to find one other video. A fella had a TH7800 dual band that done the same thing. I think what he ended up doing was sending it back to China and um, I think he spent 35 to ship it and uh, you know I heard one person say that they spent 35 both ways each time so $70 to ship to China back. I, I'm trying not to ship it back I don't really want to mess with that at this time. If I can sell it as a tech special, somebody that feels like they may be able to work on uh, small SMD components that are inside of it or uh, are better than I am looking for cold, cold solder joints or something like that, there's some type of gremlin inside this radio. That's uh, a local term that we've started using for unexplained radio problems. Um, The band's kind of open, so we'll see uh, some signals come in. But the radio does receive. Uh, no problem receiving unless it's doing the beep. And I'll cut the scans off on both sides. There, there it goes beeping. So we'll go over here. This is one of my local repeaters. Go to key up and nothing uh, that should have come back almost full scale uh, it's transmitting outside of the amateur band we'll go to 146.52 we'll cut that other side off and it usually quits the beeping in receive mode but uh 146.52 does not transmit on 146.52 I'll key up You'll see there's no offset, no split, anything like that showing. Go to this radio, it's receiving 137.82. You, you don't want to be transmitting your call sign, uh, thinking you're transmitting on national simplex, and it's actually transmitting close to the air band, 137.82. So, there may be a clue right there. Uh, I believe some of the uh, components inside, something, something on the board. I have taken the board out. I have cleaned the board. Visually eyeballed to see if there was anything that looked like it may be creating the contact between a couple of different components that maybe shouldn't have. Uh, I've, I've done my best to try to clean it and I've reassembled it and everything's good but uh there's just something off on the radio I've reflashed firmware three different times with three different versions of firmware uh, including up to the latest firmware that was released in 2015 I've had this radio since 2015 it was my mobile unit, so it stayed in a truck that I drive maybe once a week. Sometimes I don't. It, it does sit uh, in a truck park for long periods of time. Um, so it's not had a, a heavy mobile use. It's just mainly sit there. But it has developed this problem. And um, sometimes when you go to key up, it will give you that beat. Let's see. Yeah. So, 
here. I'm, I'm trying to key another local repeater and I get nothing. It just gives me that beep. It was a 440 repeater. Just giving us the beep. So I just, uh, it's having some type of issue. You can hear the contacts inside of it for the different bands um, clicking on and off like it should. But it's just not getting out. And like I said, when it does key up, it's keying up out of out of the amateur band. So be aware of that. This is a tech special. It's going to need some type of repair to be used as it is. Uh, if you just plug it straight into an antenna and try to operate, you're you're not going to be operating in the amateur band more than likely. Every now and then it will transmit where it's supposed to, but it's not reliable. So if you want it as parts radio, you got a good removable faceplate that could be used on another radio of this type. You got a fan, you got uh, the SO239 connection in the back that could be taken off. Uh, several little components, you know, that could be used. The chassis. Uh, I just don't want to mess with sending it back to China for repair at this time I'd rather offer it as a tech special and just uh, look for me something else now this is the plus model you can see there's the plus sticker on the back uh, I have another one right here and it's currently not turned on because I'm using the power source for my demo but this 9800 I've had a few months longer than this one and I've never had a problem with this one. It's always stayed in the house from day one. Still got the plastic on the screen of it. It's hooked to a six meter radio, uh, antenna. So I've got it dedicated to six meter FM work. Like I said, no problems with this radio. Uh, so the 9800s are pretty decent radios, but as overseas radios, you take the chance of getting that one in a 100. There's most people refer to it of getting a, a lemon and uh, obviously this one has uh, developed some kind of gremlin that's what I'll refer to it as it, they only come with a one year warranty so this one being two years old is of course out of that warranty um, you will get the radio as is you'll get the microphone you'll get the programming cable and you'll get the uh, factory box and packaging brand new power cord that I hadn't used separation bracket uh, separation cable mounting hardware extra fuses for the power line um, mounting bracket all that will be included and uh, I'll try I got an instruction manual uh, laying around but if I can't find it and you decide to purchase it, uh, it can be downloaded online. So other than that, that's where we're at on this radio. I, I just wanted you to see firsthand what you're looking at. I figure video can explain it a little better than words. So thank you for watching.